Hello everyone, welcome to a new video on this channel. In this video, we are skipping an intro. In this video, we are testing Apex Legends. As you can already see, we are using a quad-core CPU, especially the i5-7400, 16GB of dual-chair RAM and the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 in 3GB. VRAM edition. You can see at the beginning uh, we are running at full usage on four cores. Apex Legends is very, very CPU demanding. I would recommend to use at least a quad core CPU like this one, but uh, this, the 7400, has got only four cores and it's four threads. It has got no hyper threading support. I would recommend to use at least a Core i7 from 3rd or 4th generation because these CPUs have got 4 cores but also additional 4 threads so all in all you've got 8 threads on these CPUs and this is making a huge difference in the Apex Legends since it's really really CPU hungry especially at the beginning of a match. If you already have four cores running at 100% in the main menu, our gaming experience might be very interesting. All in all, the GPU in the system, the GTX 1060, is still pretty decent, even for these CPU demanding games like Apex Legends, but also Call of Duty Warzone for example, would be very demanding for a quad-core CPU. Uh, but the GTX 1060 would actually perform pretty okay-ish in these titles. The quad-core is really going to hold it back. Um, we've got to test some different settings now, but I would personally start with um, 1080p and low settings. Uh, you can add anti-aliasing for uh, a, a sharper image for a better image quality but I would personally set even the texture streaming budget you could you could use medium because you've got the three gigabyte version um, the three gigabyte available but I personally would keep this on low and you're filtering you can keep it on active, but now this one ambient occlusion quality should be disabled. Also, this one don't need it. Spot shadow can disable it entirely. Model detail, effects, impact marks, and rectals all on low. Especially rectals is also, um, yeah, CPU demanding. So all in all, the settings that we're using are mostly um, low settings. If you've got an NVIDIA card, you can keep NVIDIA Reflex active, activated. You can disable these two. I thought I already clicked disable. Okay, but that's all fine. So now we are using mostly low settings, but still anti-lazing is uh, activated and texture filtering is also activated but everything else is deactivated so let's jump into the game should apply first see how much the cpu is going to hold us back i already tested uh four guys and veteran today both titles ran very well on this system but um both titles aren't that cpu hungry like apex legends is What's pretty typical for these eSport titles uh, like Counter-Strike GO but also Apex Legends um, they aren't that much GPU VRAM hungry it's really going to run pretty well on the um, GTX 1060 3 gigabytes. I don't want to be Jumpmaster give it to somebody else but you can see um, GPU is nearly maxed out but the CPU, all four cores are running again at 100%. But having a look at the frame time and also the overall performance, it is not that bad actually. I think my last Apex Legends benchmark on 
this system has been way worse. Oh, it's it's feeling okay, okay-ish. Even at the beginning of the match, I thought it would perform way worse on on the quad-core CPU. Okay, okay. Ooh, I'm getting shot at now. There's one. Oh god, only six shots remaining. Let's kill him first. Uh, I'm completely out of ammo. I think there was one guy still remaining. I actually need proper weapons. I think the Mozambique is good uh, at the beginning, but... Okay, let's change this one. Uh oh. Three versus one. No chance. That's it for the benchmark. The performance overall was very good. I expected a way worse performance of the quad core CPU in this game, actually. As I already said, I already tested Apex Legends a couple of times on this system, and I remember, especially at the beginning of a match, there have been a lot of lags because of the quad core. But yeah, this is, it seems like this isn't the case anymore, and it's now way better optimized on uh, quad-core CPUs. That's actually very, very good. I'd still say, if you want to play this game on a regular basis, and um, you really don't want to play at any disadvantage, and you need stable FPS, you should... Uh, choose at least a quad core CPU with hyper threading because this will give you way more FPS, in my opinion. Average FPS would be way better. GDX 1060 is still okay for this game, um, but also with a stronger CPU, I think it will easily be able to. Um, yeah, get 10 or 20 FPS increase compared to our results now. 88 FPS isn't bad for this shooter game, especially if you're playing on a 75 Hz monitor like I uh, I'm doing right now. But for the future and uh, for a more stable experience, I mean, we got into 1% levels of 45. That's not perfect for... Um, I should do. So yeah, overall I would say the game is uh, pretty well playable on the system. Not perfectly fine, but pretty well. Um, I hope you like this video. If you do, feel free to leave a like and consider subscribing to this channel. I hopefully see you all in the next one. Stay safe and have a great day. Goodbye.